A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The just man, though he had died early, shall be at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not in passing of time, nor can it be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding is a hoary crown for men, and unskilled life the attained of old age. He who pleased God was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported, snatched away, lest wickedness pervert his mind, or deceit beguile his soul. For the witchery of pastry, things obscure what is right, and the world of desire transformed the innocent mind. Having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of long career, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore, he spent, him, he spent him out of the midst of wickedness. But the people saw it and did not understand, nor they take this into account. The word of the Lord.
the second reading, justified by his blood, who will be saved through Christ from the wrath. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at an appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only by, only with difficulty does one die for a just person. Though perhaps for a good person, one might find courage to die. But God proves his love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by the blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, but how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by life? Not only that, but we will also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the whom we have now been reconciliation, have now have received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. And speak to God. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. 
ill and in prison, and you did not care for me? Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of the least of this, you did not do for me. And this will go off to eternal punishment, and the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Today is a unique day. The church gives us to remember our faithful departed, commemoration of the faithful departed. It's a special day for us Catholics, even to receive Holy Communion three times is a privilege for us. Praying for these brothers and sisters who have gone ahead of us. The commemoration of today follows immediately that of yesterday of the saints. Those who are in heaven, known and unknown. Today is set aside to pray for all the dead. And why do we pray for all the dead? The departed souls. Because first, we know that death is not the end of our existence. Secondly, if the departed souls are in purgatory, our prayers today would go a long, a long way to shorten their time of purification before they can enter into heaven. You and me, we are going to pray for them. At the death of a person, a relative, there is usually grief and sadness, especially from his close friends and family members. But no sooner have the tears dried up than the person is completely forgotten. It is as though they never existed. Nothing can be more painful than knowing that a time will come when no living person will remember you, remember me when I have gone. We thank God that the church set aside this day for us who are still alive to remember the dead, to pray for them, invoking God's mercy and love to us them. It's not a day of mourning or weeping, but it's a day of asking God's mercy for the souls. There are great benefits in remembering the dead. By honoring their memories, we are reminded of our mortality. Today I'm here, tomorrow I'm not here. And there will be someone praying for me. Whatever you do, whatever good you do for others, the same good will come to you. Do that today. My dear friends in Christ, there is no teacher like the grave. Please visit the grave, the cemetery, if you wish to gain wisdom, to learn humility, despise vanities and know the value of time and much more. Just look at the tombs of those you, you know or you knew who reigned on earth, but now sleep in a grave of silence. Then you will be humble enough and return to, to God. The gospel we have just heard, it underlines two things. Whatever you do to the least is accounted at the end of time. Whatever you, do, you don't do to the least of our brothers and sisters will be also accounted against you. We hear that at the end of our lives, the gospel reminds us we will be judged not by what degrees and certificates we have, not according to our possessions and positions in society. We will be judged the way we use our power and our material things towards the least. And it is very simple to give food to the hungry, to give water to the thirsty, to welcome the strangers, to visit the prisoners, to clothe the naked, to care for those who are sick. Notice, Jesus did not say to the sick, he said, 
take care of the sick. He did not say eradicate poverty. No, he, he did not say that. He said, give food to the hungry. Whatever you did, you did to me. Sometimes, as human beings, we become so ambitious to change our communities, our world, but we neglect to do what is basic and simple, which will account at the end of our lives, to give food to the hungry. We might not be able to solve the, the hunger of our communities, of our societies, but giving food to one hungry person will make a difference. And this is what Jesus is calling us in the Gospel of today. Let us be like Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who uses his power and time to serve, to love, and to care. And may the souls of all the faithful departed through the mass of God rest in peace. Amen. We stand up for the prayers. We call upon the name of our, of our most high God as we present our petitions before him. For the church throughout the world, may the good shepherd continue to sustain his flock through all his trials and sorrows. Let us pray to the Lord. For legislators, may the Holy Spirit grant them wisdom and courage to promote laws and that protect human life at all stages. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are grieving the loss of a loved one, may the promise of eternal life in the Lord bring them comfort and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. For this faith community, may Christ the King bring healing to every heart that is wounded by, by heart and indifference. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all the faithful departed, may they enjoy eternal life in heaven and behold the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all those prayers lying deep in our hearts, we present them to the Lord in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Merciful Father, we ask you that you hear the petitions of your people and answer them in accordance with your divine will, through Christ our Lord.
Wash away with bread the blood of Christ, the sins of your departed servants, for you purify unceasingly by your merciful forgiveness those you once placed in the waters of baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord may be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it's right and just. It is true right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give it thanks. Lord God, Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of the blessed resurrection has dawned, that those sudden by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not any. And when this earthly dwelling returns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the force and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. At the 
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
let us pray. Having received the sacrament of your only begotten Son, who was sacrificed for us and rose in glory, we humbly implore you, O Lord, for your departed servants, that cleansed by the Paschal mysteries, they may glory in the gifts of the resurrection to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> for the, all the faithful departed, eternal rest, grant unto them, O Lord. And let our light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Eternal rest, grant unto them, O Lord. And let our light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Eternal rest, grant unto them, O Lord. And let our light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the God of all consolation bless you, for in his unformable goodness he created a human race, and in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, he has given believers the hope of rising again. Amen. Amen. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins, and to all the dead a place of light and peace. Amen. Amen. So may we all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Amen. And have a blessed day. You too, Father.